So we're going to go back to the fall of 2016. The price of oysters had increased to the point where it might be profitable to start farming them again. The trend was predictable. The demand would continue to grow and thus drive the price. I decided to get into the business, back into the business <clears throat> and went to Maryland to look for a work boat. I drove down to check one I had seen listed and it turned out to be too far gone. While I was down there, I contacted people I had known from the old days and they said, call Tom Howell. He has something in his shed. Well, I had heard of Tom. He had built the Mr. Jim, a 65 foot oyster by boat and ran a boat called the Half Shell for a number of years. I called him up and went to see him. He had an amazing shop out in the country on an inlet outside of Cambridge, Maryland. A railway, ship saw, planer, all big stuff. A real shipyard for wooden boats. He did a lot of work uh, repairing skipjacks. He took me around to this side shed and opened the doors. Inside was a wooden hull with a massive stem. She was 30 feet long, 12 feet wide, and 4 feet deep. Heavily built 30 years ago. It was never finished. They've been in the shed all this time, waiting for me. He needed the space, and yes, he would sell her, sell it. We made a deal, and I came back to Connecticut to make arrangements to truck her back to the creek. Um, she wasn't the Merlin yet. Uh, it took us a while to figure out the name of her. But uh, that's how uh, that's how that was my first first view of her, and I, uh, I I said, my God, this this boat's been waiting for me <laughs> for thirty years, and uh, um, I, we proceeded in to the uh, look her over. And this is a shot looking. Uh, aft up looking towards her stem and uh, you can see that she was kind of configured as a uh, as a tug. Here we've got her outside. I've made arrangements with uh, Joe Boat to truck her back up to Connecticut. They came down with a hydraulic trailer and uh, we, uh, we put her on and uh, we had to park overnight because they only they only let you run 12 hours, and um, so we ended up spending the night at a hotel down there. And there's a picture of her uh, from the hotel room. Uh, uh, my project, <laughs> and uh, here she is in Connecticut. Um, two days later, and. Uh, we got her blocked up in front of the shop and um, getting ready to go to town on her. Started immediately by building a shed uh, around her to keep her out of the weather. I did a lot of drawings of the boat in order to get the scale and the um, proportions right. And you don't really see it in this in this drawing, but the wheelhouse, you step down into the wheelhouse um, so that the wheelhouse is proportional to the rest of the boat. The boat's only 30 feet long, but the wheelhouse uh, is only about five feet high. So you got to have at least uh, two and a half feet of floor underneath you <laughs> in order to fit in there. But what it means is, is that a distance, 
she looks right. Uh, she doesn't look, uh, otherwise the wheelhouse would look way too tall. So uh, it was a little trick. And um, here we are, I've uh, started to frame her out. And you, you start to see uh, a little bit how massively the boat is built. Uh, she came with two uh, 80-gallon uh, Monel fuel tanks, uh, which had to be plumbed in. And um, here we are, we're framing the, uh, the base of the wheelhouse, uh, which will go on afterwards. And this is a shot of, uh, shot of the boat in the shed at night during the winter. We had a, a lot of snow that, that year, and uh, we worked on her uh, all winter long in there. Um, this shot sh shows we're, we're starting to uh, <clears throat> work a bit on the, on the deck. And you notice on, on the port side, there are uh, these holes cut out. And those were, those were for stanchions. And um, that was sort of old style. And they would, they would have supported the, uh, the rails that went around the boat. And I decided to uh, get rid of those because that was a potential for leakage um, down through those. It's an awful lot of caulking. And so we ended up, we ended up building, uh, or we ended up building a deck over, uh, over this. And uh, the deck ended up being about an inch and a half thick, uh, which was kind of proportional with the rest of the rest of the hull. Uh, it was a heavily built boat. And um, then we sheathed it and uh, with Dynel, and there'll be some pictures of that later. But it uh, it basically made the, made the hull watertight, and uh, fresh water is one of the one of the things that really gets to wooden boats. So um, let's see. I guess we're um, this just shows her in her in the shed and. Uh, working on it. And here we've started to, uh, we've sheathed her, we've put the deck on it, and uh, we haven't sheathed it yet, but we've we've added uh, another uh, three quarters inch of plywood. And um, uh, we basically have the uh, engine hatch framed out, the wheelhouse hatch framed out, and then up forward, uh, the forecastle. So while this was all going on, we were rebuilding the engine. Uh, the engine was a uh, it was a six cylinder Ford Lehman, naturally aspirated, um, basically a uh, tractor engine that's been marinized, and uh, they're very reliable. And um, uh, the engine came with the boat, and rumor had it that it had been underwater. Nobody nobody really knew. Uh, too much about it, so uh, we decided we'd go through it. And uh, we found a mouse nest in one of the cylinders, um, which explained why it wouldn't roll over. So uh, at any rate, here she is, it's all apart, and uh, um, uh, going through everything. Um, and here's a nice shot of her all com completed, and painted up and ready to go. Another shot of the uh, of the deck uh, right before we sheathed her with Dynel, which is like a fiberglass cloth. Um, it shows where we filled in around the uh, what would have been the forward house when she was a tugboat. Uh, it was going to be a tugboat, and um, I would I put the cabin aft on her because um, I like to be able to see what everything that's going on in front of me in terms of the crew and the working and whatnot. It's a way of keeping an eye on things. Here the uh, forward deck house is uh, framed out. Down below you've got a bunk, a uh, chain locker, um, hydraulic tank, um, anchor storage. Um, what else? Well, hopefully a wood stove eventually. And here I am with uh, in the uh, in the midst of the sheathing process, we're um, uh, starting to work with the fiberglass.
and uh, it's the deck hatch on the uh, engine hatch in the wheelhouse and we've uh, we sheathed the uh, roof of the wheelhouse in the deck hatch or the engine hatch this just shows the framing of the uh, of the wheelhouse I built this uh, outside on the dock because I, I was running out of room um, with a project and I th this is probably uh, late late winter early spring um, and again I think this is another shot of the sheath uh, sheath deck uh, we've got the uh, a couple of holes cut for the fills for the fuel tanks uh, the aft uh, hatch for the lazarette that would be where the steering gear is um, there's a sort of a temporary uh, helm set up uh, in the uh, um, in what will be the wheelhouse space the engine hatch combing is on and uh, we haven't put the, uh, the four deck hatch on yet and uh, this shot shows the um, the sheathing, uh, the dynal sheathing, and um, which was all done in um, one day and kind of a continuous pour. And you, you can see the uh, five gallon uh, buckets of uh, resin that we used on it. And uh, there were three or four of us working on this. Um, and we had the we had heaters going, and it was a uh, it was a pretty uh, pretty pretty intense job. The um, so the wheelhouse uh, pretty much completed. Uh, it's got a layer of resin on the outside of the wheelhouse, and uh, the cabin roof has been sheathed. And uh, I I stuck those ventilators on there just just to make it look good. <laughs> uh, Again, this shows the sheathing process and uh, Jim's husband, uh, I mean, Emily's husband, Jim, uh, working on helping tape the, uh, uh, the edge of it down. And the, you see, the advantage of this is, is that the sheathing really wraps the hull. So the, the water really has a hard time getting into the, into the hull and, uh, and protects the deck. And um, it wraps up on the, on the uh, combings and uh, really makes it watertight, which is uh, something you really you really want on a, on a wooden boat. There's the uh, wheelhouse door. Um, we prefab those and uh, put them together. Uh, there's the, uh, the uh, doghouse up forward um, with its with its hatch and um, Again, this was a, a uh, I had to make a couple of these in order to get it right, get the proportions right. Um, let's see, I think on this, we're starting to take the, uh, take this frame down. The weather, the weather started to get good and uh, it'd get about a hundred degrees in the, in the shed. And so it was just, uh, we decided to take it down. And also when I built the shed, I built it too low. So I couldn't stand up in there. And, uh, it was, it was, uh, it was hard to work in, um, cause you were working on your knees a lot. So, um, anyway, we, it, it was, it felt good to take the thing down and, um, uh, you could get a, get a good look at it, get a good look at the boat. Here's the uh, pretty much the completed wheelhouse without the uh, without any paint yet, and uh, she's just about ready to go onto the boat. And there's a shot of uh, the Merlin at this point um, with her deck house, uh, the wheelhouse on, uh, lazarette hatch, the uh, main engine hatch, and the uh, doghouse forward and sheathed and uh, the next step is uh, to put the rails on, uh, tow rails and the cap rail. And uh, another shot of her. Um, so this is uh, probably the spring of 2017. 
So uh, what we're doing here is my friend up the street, Dave Pooler, who uh, you know, a lot of people uh, helped on uh, putting this book together. And I'm going to talk about that uh, in a little bit. But uh, we're machining the uh, rudder shaft uh, down because um, we were we were getting some corrosion on that, and uh, it was starting to lock up in the uh, in the in the in, the, in the, the stuffing box bearing there, and we we just needed to relieve it about an eighth of an inch. So we put it on the lathe and cut her down and uh, so that we could steer the boat. <laughs> and uh, this, uh, this was a space that we were working on uh, to put the U-joint uh, 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 in uh, to the hydraulic pump so I could run hydraulics for the hauler and uh, the, the, for the boom winch. And um, uh, basically what this does is attach to the front of the engine with, with what they call a jack shaft. And uh, this, this shows the, um, the jack shaft attached to the front of the motor with a hydraulic clutch that runs the hydraulic pump. So when you flick a switch, that engages this uh, clutch mechanism, and uh, and you've got uh, plenty of power to run the winch. The winch uh, will pick about uh, close to 2,000 pounds, which would actually, if you hooked onto something solid, would roll a boat right over. But plenty strong winch, and I, I, I like to sort of try to overbuild things if I can. Um, you know, they, they they seem to last a little longer. This is the uh, control for the uh, hauler, which is uh, it's a pot hauler, and uh, this this would go on the side of the wheelhouse with the davit, and uh, we'll use this for oystering and um, uh, cage culture uh, in the oyster operation, and running running a long line with this. It's just uh, another piece of mechanics that came from. Uh, uh, another boat that I had years ago, the Emily, and uh, they used to haul crab pots with her with this down in the uh, down in the Chesapeake. You'll see a shot of this from the other side a little later. Um, okay, here we got the, uh, the wheelhouse on the deck. We're we're getting ready to put the put the rails on. Um, we've uh, I think what I've done is. Uh, we've, the deck is sheathed at this point and um, watertight. You'll see the, uh, the two hatches or little hatches for the uh, fuel tanks. And there's the uh, fore deck uh, hatch and uh, doghouse forward. And um, this is another shot that shows the uh, starboard side rail on. Um, and uh, just had a lot of fun putting these on as the boat really started to take on shape. Um, and you got these big uh, freeing port ports, and uh, this is what's called this boat is basically it's called a deck boat, and um, a lot of the operation is when we're transplanting oysters, and uh, so you need these big big ports so that when you can. Uh, when you got a deck load of oysters on, you can wash the uh, wash the oysters out through those holes, and uh, also it it frees the water. Um, should you get water on board, um, uh, out through those. The uh, these boats, when they're loaded, um, will be loaded right down with um, you know three four inches of freeboard. So. You're, you run almost decks of wash. Uh, this shows uh, pretty much the port, uh, the starboard side completed, um, and just a close up of 
you know, basically how you're trying to make everything watertight. Here we've got uh, a pretty good shot of port and starboard on and uh, getting ready for paint. This is the stern. This was a, a little more complicated uh, part of uh, shaping the uh, the gunnels for the for the boat. Um, I ended up using a um, you know lapping the uh, lapping the wood and laminating. Here's a picture of Merlin painted. Um, we we're playing with the color scheme here. Uh, trying to figure out um you know what what we're gonna do uh you know it all kind of evolves and uh and this is a shot of actually putting the putting the guards on and uh th these guards are white oak and they're um they help protect the hull against the docks and other boats whatever you're up against and um uh, Here's a shot. We're building the uh, um, radar uh, mast. You got to get it up above the crew. And uh, uh, there's a shot of it expo uh, on the uh, on the boat with the uh, running lights and you know more and more details. Go. So here, uh, building a different. A house on the boat, one that I can walk around on deck, because uh, I found the last one so onerous. And uh, we're getting ready for the winter of 2017 and uh, closing her up. We got a coat of paint on her, on her decks, and uh, getting ready to sheath it in plastic. Here we are inside, nice and cozy, tight to the weather, and uh, able to uh, able to work on her. Yeah. I guess this would be in the spring of 2018. We've uh, taken the building down, and we're going to start work on the bottom. And uh, another shot of her mast rigging. Now, in this shot, we've put uh, red lead paint on the bottom, which is a traditional uh, way to prepare the bottom for bottom paint. And uh, this, is, uh, this goes way back, the 1800s. And uh, it's the first layer. And uh, here we are, we're getting getting uh, pretty close to getting ready to side cast her over onto the rail. But uh, there's a few things that have to be done first. And um, one is to tighten up the bottom and put, uh, put a skirt around the water line and ran um, uh, sprinklers underneath her to help swell the the uh, planking. You got to remember that this boat has been out of the water for over 30 years, or actually never been in the water, and uh, you got to swell the planks quite a bit. In some places they were uh, quarter inch gaps. So before we could put the boat in the water, uh, the rail, which I've been using for the last 20 years, 30 years, was getting pretty funky. And uh, I decided to rebuild it, and um, which involved new ties, new rails, and uh, a new haul on post. Okay. And um, this shows a little bit of the condition of what it looked like um, before we started really um, working on her. And we're starting to replace the ties here and replace the rails. And 
This shows it pretty uh, pretty close with a uh, with the old cradle, which had a uh, which had wood, wooden bunks on it, uh, made out of pressure treated lumber, and um, where while they were good, um, I was always a little bit skeptical of uh, of the wood breaking. I, I've had that happen before, and um, I wanted to replace it with steel, so I ended up uh, rebuilding the cradle out of steel. And uh, this cradle is adjustable. The width of it is adjustable. Um, it's got uh, two wheels on each, well, four wheels on each side. And um, there are two cradles on the, on the rail, uh, or there will be. Um, but she's all rebuilt now from, uh, from up from the street all the way down to, the, uh, to below low tide. We put in a, a new Holland post. This is about, uh, I think it's seven or eight foot piece of granite that's set in concrete uh, up at the head of the head of the rail. I got so tired of the old uh, telephone pole uh, that was half rotted, um, nearly given way every time I hauled a boat that I decided I, I wanted to put something in that wasn't going to move. And in many ways, this kind of uh, embodies uh, the quarry, uh, the, the creek, the water, the, this picture, um, the rails, uh, the oystering, moving the, moving the granite by boat, uh, you know, it, 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 it sort of, uh, this picture embodies a lot of it for me. Yeah. Um, this is the what we use to move the boat, the Merlin, over onto the rails from in front of the shop. Uh, these are called creepers, and uh, we have four of them. We jacked, uh, and this shot here shows the creeper next to the rudder of the Merlin. Um, we we jacked the Merlin up, and or, in its, on its cradle and put these creepers underneath it and then rolled it over on planks. Um, to the rail. And, um, you know, it was, uh, it was quite a job. The, uh, uh, I had great help with uh, a couple of real pros and uh, which I'll talk about a little later at the conclusion and uh, um, really couldn't have done it without them. And we uh, were able to jack her up and slide her over on top of the rails and then jack her down uh, right on the rail. And here's a shot of her uh, pretty much ready to launch um, on the rails um, in front of the shop. We've got her up, we're rigging her now for fishing. Uh, we've got the hauler there that we talked about earlier uh, with the davit and um, the uh, snatch block that um, the line runs through. And, and then aft, I've got a uh, stern ramp that I built for clam dredge that will uh, be coming up the stern. And then we use the boom up forward for the, the oyster dredge. And uh, the idea is, is that basically the boat can do just about everything, uh, which is what you want to do. You want to be diversified. Here we've got, actually, we go back to this picture. We've got, uh, uh, shows both boats up on the rails. I've got uh, the Raven, which is my lobster boat, and uh, she's up ahead of the Merlin. And um, so it's uh, you can fit two up there, and uh, we're trying to use every inch.
Here's a clam dredge. Uh, I built this down on the dock, and uh, this is uh, I end up building pretty much all my all my equipment. Here we are loading the uh, clam dredge onto the stern ramp of the Merlin, and there she is uh, sitting on the ramp. Now, what this does is it runs up and down the the ramp uh, down into the water. You tow it, uh, pump water down to it, it catches clams. Then you haul it back up, it comes up the ramp, door trips on the bottom, and uh, clams go out onto the table. You pick them off, put them into baskets, baskets into burlap bags or into bags, and uh, off they go to market. And there's uh, a shot of the uh, there's a shot of the uh, Merlin with this dredge and a nice shot of her up underneath and raving ahead. Here we are, we're launching her, and you can see the pumps are running. And it took her about two or three days to tighten up. And uh, here she is, tied to the dock with um, oyster steaks on her. Uh, we take these out and mark the corners of the oyster beds. And uh, you can see the dredge. There's a, I'm hanging the oyster dredge off the boom on one side. Um, got that loaded on. And um, yeah, we're getting ready to go to work. And there she is. Out on our mooring and uh, ready to go. Now this is a tattoo of the shop on Butch Burns's calf. And he was the fellow who ran the machine that put the granite hauling post up on the uh, head of the rail. And it was just kismet that uh, he was he was working on this project, and um, and there were so many connections um, with the people that helped me uh, put this together uh, that it's really been a, a community effort, and you know I I really want to take this take this moment to to uh, thank the members of the Stony Creek community for their help and encouragement throughout this project. And I want to stress how much it's meant to me because I couldn't do it alone. Um, in the midst of it, this project took four years and I, in the midst of it, I came down with throat cancer and almost died. I was hospitalized and was quite ill for about six months. And um, uh, in many ways, the, uh, the project um, and, you know, kept me going. Uh, at any rate, things are much better now and uh, I'm thriving and feeling great. But there's a... Yeah, I want to read a list of uh, people that um, help me. Mike Bartlett, Jim Colopy, Emily Waters, Hunk DeRoss, Matt Barnes, John Barnes, Tucker Yarrow, Butch Burns, Nikki Fisher, Wayne Jacobson, Jim Harris, Jim Fury, Kim Granberry, Dougie Logan, Stevie Consolo, Gary Page, Bob and Lenny Lilliquist, the Brainers, Stony Creek Quarry and the Atkinsons, and Dave Pooler. I, uh, as I say, I really couldn't have done it without their help and 
Um, and there are <clears throat> many others that uh, give me help and encouragement along the way. Um, in conclusion, as of now, we're in uh, the end of August 2020. Uh, the pandemic has totally changed uh, the world um, and the market forecast <laughs> for oysters as it has everything else. And uh, the immediate future is uncertain. Uh, however, uh, we're, we're going to be using the Merlin to transplant seed oysters to grow for market beds over this winter and spring for harvest in the next few years. So the plan is, is to continue.